Welcome to the Ask Dr. Khan Show. You're just one whiteboard away from solving your health puzzle. Today, we're gonna to continue with the last of our brain, sugar, brain and blood sugar dysfunction series. So, a lot of times people have blood sugar symptoms, such as they get lightheaded, shaky, irritable if you don't eat, and then if you eat a big meal, then you get sleepy or drowsy or fatigued after a meal. These are blood sugar symptoms. Now, many times for most people that I see in our virtual consultation practice, is due to dietary reasons. People are not eating properly, too much sugar, too much carbohydrate, and they're basically just creating this high glucose situation with a resulting crash. So you have this blood sugar roller coaster. But sometimes people come to us, they're already eating perfect, but yet they still have blood sugar issues. People say, I still have belly fat, I can't lose weight, I have blood sugar symptoms. What's up? It could be due to a brain dysfunction. And I have outlined several different ways this can happen. So today we're gonna to talk about the last one. And this is basal ganglia. Basal ganglia is a collection of neuron in the middle part of your brain. And this part of the brain controls, it's like a gating mechanism. It controls your thoughts, your movement, your emotion. It's part of the limbic system. And there's an area called the indirect pathway or a pathway called the indirect pathway of the basal ganglia. And this is basically the pathway that help your body to kind of suppress and inhibit things. So if this doesn't work, then your body can't suppress things. And if you can't suppress thoughts, thoughts will escape. Many times this is seen as anxiety and worry because you can't shut it off. So you have this restless line, you can't shut it off and results in anxiety. Sometimes you can't shut off movement. So if you can't shut off movement, what that will show up is, is tics and tremors and restless leg syndrome. So there's a lot of connection between blood sugar and these movement patterns and these uh, mood patterns. So we're gonna talk about that. Now, some of the symptoms that can come from this, as I mentioned earlier, you might have tics, where you have this movement. You may have uh, dystonia, which is like the stiffness or tightness in your muscle. You may have OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. You may have anxiety. So this is movement, this is mood. Okay? And uh, this can all be associated with an imbalance in this area. And I'm gonna show you how this can lead to blood sugar problems. So if you have impairment, impaired basal ganglia, what happens is this basal ganglia, its main purpose is to inhibit. So it inhibits the sympathetic response sympathetic nervous system. And this is the part of the nervous system that controls everything that's on autopilot, but that's pushing you toward fight or flight. So this is kind of acts as a brake on your fight or flight system. So if you lose basal ganglionic function, you're gonna lose the brake pedal on the fight or flight system. This is gonna cause an increase in epinephrine and norepinephrine production. These are your adrenaline hormones. And when that happens, you're gonna have increased heart rate, increased metabolic rate, increased blood pressure. You're gonna feel anxiety from this. You get shaky, like an adrenaline rush, right? You get an adrenaline rush that you get shaky and then you get insomnia, you can't sleep well. You get muscle tightness and even leg cramps. So this is what happens as a result of losing the brake on the fight or flight system, you start getting these increased metabolic rate, like you're in the fight or flight when you have no reason to. It's not like you're stressed, you're not, but you just feel like you can never shut it off. You're always anxious, you're restless, and, and it's because this part of your brain may not be functioning properly. And what happens when you're constantly on the go, fight or flight, you're gonna burn up glucose rapidly. And when you do, that's when you get the blood sugar symptoms. So you doc, I'm eating small frequent meals, I'm cutting out the sugar, but yet I'm still having blood sugar symptoms. Maybe you have a brain-based mechanism that can cause this blood sugar symptom. And I talked about three other ways this can happen in previous episodes. You may wanna go back and watch it. So how do we consider this? So clinically, clinical considerations meaning when you come to me and we help you 
run diagnostic, do the appropriate test, take a detailed history, and find out what's going on. We may have to consider uh, basal ganglia. I'm going to write BG for basal ganglia. Okay, injury, such as in a traumatic brain injury, like you bang your head, you had a concussion, head injury. That can cause injury to this area and start to create this scenario. You may also have problem with basal ganglionic degeneration. Meaning this is not from one injury, but from just chronic inflammation of this area of the brain, which can happen due to heavy metal toxicities, infections and so forth, blood sugar problem, you get basal ganglionic degeneration. This will be things like Parkinson disease. Because this develops over time, and this area can malfunction, and you can still have blood sugar symptoms in addition to movement problem, which is what Parkinson's is. And you can also have this basal ganglionic issue from a silent stroke. Maybe you had a silent stroke, you didn't know you had a stroke, and you just started losing function. And sometimes we can just have stroke, it's called lacunar infarct. This is an area near here where there's a collection of blood vessels, and it's a very common area for strokes. So this may be something that needs to be diagnosed. Sometimes the imaging may be required. Now, another way that can happen is through GAT autoimmune. GAT is glutamic acid decarboxylase. It's an enzyme that helps you to make GABA. And this GABA, GABA is used in the, this area to help you create that inhibition. So you can have autoimmune to this enzyme that can create a deficiency. So then this area, this part of the brain does not work because you don't have enough GABA or neurotransmitter to help you create function. This can be due to gluten. Gluten sensitivity is known to create cross-reactivity cross to this enzyme in your body that help you produce GABA. So we can have a gluten problem that can trigger an autoimmunity. You can also have strep cross-reaction. What that means is you can have a strep infection, and now the antibody to strep can cross-react with basal ganglia, and now you have autoimmune to this part of the brain due to an initial strep infection. In kids, this can happen. You have kids that will get a strep infection, and then all of a sudden develop ticks. All of a sudden develop OCD and anxiety. We didn't have that before, all of a sudden they have it. This is called PANDAS. I'm gonna write it over here. PANDAS or PANS. This is pediatric autoimmune triggered by strep. Okay? So these conditions can happen in kids, but really in adults, this can happen as well. You can get strep and it can cross react. So that's another mechanism, which is really an autoimmune disease but strep, so we have, may have to do strep tighter and see if there's present high levels of strep. Okay? And antibody, uh, antibiotic may be a treatment, but also herbal could be a treatment, but really you're managing the autoimmune portion of that. That's really the key, which is not done in conventional medicine. The last step, remember we're talk, talking about GABA. You can have a GABA imbalance on its own, where you just don't make enough GABA. We talked about this in the previous neurotransmitter video, and what will cause that? Typically blood sugar imbalance, <laughs> Blood sugar problems. So you see, blood sugar problem can create GABA deficiency, and then that can impair basal ganglia. But then basal ganglionic dis dis dysfunction can cause blood sugar problems, which can feed into this GABA problem, become a vicious cycle. See, everything's connected. That's why you cannot, there's no magic pill. There is just what is going on. Actually diagnose it, asking good questions, run the diagnosis, run the right test, so you know exactly what you're fixing. So you're not taking 20 pills, you're just doing exactly what you need. This is where we come in. We do uh, online virtual consultations with you. We do it through video consultation. It's great, you don't have to leave your home. You can do it in your pajamas and you don't have to get stuck in traffic. We talk to you, we can run labs in your area and we can get answers for you. So if you need help, please call us at 480-988-6269 and schedule a discovery call where my assistant will talk to you and find out if you're a good candidate for our program or you can schedule this case review, uh, this discovery call online by going to askdrcon.com slash get started. I'll put the link on this post. But definitely there are things that you need to be aware when you have blood sugar symptoms, you get lightheaded, shaky, you over, you don't eat, and you eat, you feel you know, uh, tired, your energy fluctuates quite a bit, you have fatigue, you have weight gain, and you have belly fat, 
and you have sweet cravings. Those are all the basket of blood sugar symptoms. But then you also have OCD, you have anxiety. You may even have some tics or restless leg syndrome. But if you have the basket of blood sugar symptoms and these basal ganglionic symptoms together, then we may have to consider, you may have some basal ganglionic issue. Then we have to look at these clinical considerations. Did you have previous injury? Did you have, do you have some degeneration in that area due to toxins, due to heavy metals? Do you have any previous history of silent strokes? Do you have autoimmunity, perhaps gluten sensitivity? Have you ever had strep? Do you have any blood sugar issue? And so on and so forth. So this is how we figure things out, okay? So again, please share this video if you feel this, feel this is helpful. My goal is to help as many people as possible to get the right information. This is so critical because many people are just taking the pill to cover up a symptom, whether it be a medication or using a supplement to cover up a symptom. But now you know that there's much more to it and we can help you, so please. Share this video. You can also follow us on YouTube at uh, PeterConDC on YouTube.com or follow us on Facebook at Hope Integrative Wellness. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week at the Ask Dr. Kong Show. Take care.